नमो नारायण स्वामी जी नमो नारायण नमो नारायण एवरीवन ए वार्म वेलकम टू द फोर्थ एडिशन ऑफ सत्यम योगा कॉन्क्लेव एवरी मंथ वी आर हैविंग सम सम थीम फॉर द सेशंस दैट वी आर हैविंग विद स्वामी जी दे आर ऑल इन डेडिकेशन टू स्वामी सत्यानंद सरस्वती एंड फर्स्ट मंथ वी हैड a theme about uh, yoga and spirituality and so on so this time the conclave is going to be about health is wealth and how we can utilize yoga and uh, make ourselves more wealthy through our health so as every time we have four sessions in this conclave um, and i will i will just ask one more small question uh, this is a leading question to why we are doing the conclave uh so i will read it out just give me one minute so i will i will read out a sentence and uh, you have to keep your chat window ready and you have to tell who said that sentence and regarding who uh though you may think that it is not very relevant to this conclave i will explain why it is uh, being asked i'm reading out a sentence you have to just put in the chat window about who said that about who generations to come will scarce believe that such a one as this ever in flesh and blood walked upon this earth i'm reading it out again generations to come will scarce believe that such a one as this ever in flesh and blood walked upon this earth who said this about whom i'll just wait for 30 seconds you can either talk by unmuting yourself or put it in the chat window okay, you are waiting for the answer then so it is about gandhi ji and uh it is about gandhi ji and um, einstein had said that so why i i brought it out today is uh, because that is all about our uh, satyam yoga conclave we are trying to learn about the teachings of swami satyananda saraswati about the way he made yoga into a lifestyle and when we really hear from swami ji and others who have had the good fortune of uh, interacting with them uh, uh, live interacting with them and you know with him and listening to them and when they are transferring that knowledge and that experience to us it's a totally different uh, feeling altogether if we if that is not coming from somebody who has experienced it uh, through their own senses we wouldn't even believe that such a person has existed on earth and we are celebrating this birth centenary uh, we are all fortunate to be in this conclave to know more about the teachings and to know more about uh, what is going to be in the conclave uh, for this session uh, i will take it over i will give it over to swami ji swami ji uh, would you want me to introduce the speakers or uh, you want to we'll do that uh, we'll do that once I, i give a little bit of the background after that we will uh, go in to the details and you can do the introductions thank you swami namo narayan a very warm welcome to all the participants in this satyam yoga conclave and as uh, chitra bhanu so beautifully mentioned this is an interactive session and the more questions the more interaction which takes place the better it will be the livelier it will become so uh, following the queue which chitra bhanu has uh, initiated please be more interactive not just in the listening mode but interactively to begin we are celebrating the birth centenary 
of a very great personality. Paramahamsa Swami Satyananda Saraswati. And the significance of that is Swamiji achieved in one lifetime some things which we would take many lifetimes to achieve. And he did it so simply, so easily, so spontaneously, as if nothing great was happening. But it is my deep conviction that in history, this time will go as a very important time, a time which has the ability to change the course of world events. Swamiji spoke on yoga. Yoga is a immortal science, eternal science, and has been spoken of from time immemorial. But the credit of bringing an ancient science and connecting it with the modern science so that the people in the modern era can understand through their limited intellect, through their conditioned intellect of the modern science, they can appreciate the subtle and abstract science. That is what Swamiji did. And this is his birth centenary. And so therefore, we at Satyam Sumeran Yoga Research Foundation thought that the best way to offer our tribute to Gurudev would be to try and revisit his teachings. To try and understand them better. Because just like a lotus flower, it has got multiple layers of petals. We open one layer and we some, see something different in it. We open another layer, we see something different in it. That way, the more you open, the more beauty, the more subtleness, the more joy and more knowledge we perceive. So this is an effort to try and revisit and relearn so that we can imbibe these teachings within us. Because yoga is a very practical science. Yoga is not a theoretical science. Yoga was never taught in the classrooms. Yoga has always been taught in midst of nature. Because the ultimate aim of yoga is to recognize one's true nature. Who am I? That is the eternal question which has haunted civilizations. A civilization comes into being, starts achieving material progress, achieves the zenith of material progress. And after this, if it does not go into spiritual progress, it slowly wanes away. History is bears testimony to this. And it is at this zenith of material progress that the question starts coming. There is something more to life than just this. The senses, the external world, the body, the mind. And this question is what is answered in a very simple, practical manner in yoga. Of course, the answers are not easy. The path is not easy. It's long and arduous. But how do we walk that path swiftly with our best ability? That is what is taught in yoga. And in the first edition of the Satyam Yoga Conclave, we try to understand the different dimensions of life. Unfurling the three petals. 
childhood, adulthood, and elderhood. There is also the fourth petal, the Turiya, Sanyasa. But let us keep that in abeyance for some time. As a child, our whole idea is to grow our physical conditions, our mental abilities, our emotional self, so that we can reach an optimum level of abilities. And when we reach the optimum level of abilities, only then can we start looking at achieving something. That leads us to the second level. The Gruhastha Ashrama. That Ashrama where our abilities are put to good use. Good use for the person, for the person's family, for the society at large. And then the elderhood where we try to reach beyond our family. How can we enrich these aspects of life? The answer is through yoga. So then what is yoga? The next two editions of the Satyam Yoga Conclave dealt with what is yoga. Very briefly, of course. And we have what Swami Niranjananji, Paramacharya of Bihar School of Yoga has beautifully summarized the wheel of yoga. And the wheel of yoga has got six spokes. The three spokes where we can practice yoga. Atha yoga, Raja yoga, Kriya yoga. And the other three spokes Karma yoga, Jnana yoga, and Bhakti yoga where we live the principles of yoga. That is what yoga is about. And today, as we enter the fourth episode, edition of the SYC, we will now, in the next few sessions, look at the applications of yoga, how yoga can be applied. The first application is towards health and wellness. Why health and wellness? Because the body is the medium for all our activities. The body holds the mind within it. The body holds the senses within it. The body is the medium even for the Atma. Without the body, nothing is possible. And so therefore, it is very crucial that the medium, the vehicle, has to be in optimum condition. We have our car, which we send to the servicing station every six months or every 5,000 kilometers. But do we take care of this car, this vehicle of ours? We take it for granted. Till a time comes, that all the parts start falling apart. There is a disharmony and then there is problems which come up. That is how illness starts. This is when we are at ease in harmony. There is no disease. But when the harmony, the sense of ease goes away, gets dysfunctional, then it becomes disease. And modern medicine also now agrees that there is a concept called homeostasis, internal balance. And when this homeostasis is lost, then illness starts taking shape. And 
yoga also says the same thing. When there is balance or harmony between the head, the heart and the hands, then we are in optimum condition. And when this balance is lost, then there are difficulties. In today's times, with all the various fast-paced changes which have been taking place in our lives, illness has become synonymous with living. I remember, I remember in my own, when I studied medicine and then started my medical journey, hypertension, diabetes, cancer, were rare terms. Today, every alternate person has diabetes. Cancer, uh, cancer has become common. Thankfully, still, not every alternate person has cancer. But every alternate person has been in contact with at least a person who has suffered or whose family is suffering. Diabetes, hypertension, obesity, they are byproducts. I mean, it is like buy one, get four free. You get by this lifestyle and you get a host of illnesses. While we can all sit down, ruminate, criticize and talk eloquently about how this lifestyle and this way of living is creating problems. What is essential is how can we practically make a shift from here? We have come at this point. Much of it has not been in our hands. And how to live again is not much in our hands. We are guided, directed, compelled by society. And we need to conform to those standards. But then, is there a way that we can make some changes within ourselves? And if so, what are those changes? And how can we have them? How is it that yoga has an impact on health? In the next three sessions, we will be speaking in depth on this very topic. I have chosen three illnesses, cancer, women's health issues and lifestyle disorders. Because I believe that with these three representative ailments, we can get a better understanding of the entire spectrum of illness and slowly learn how we can shift them into wellness. But before we go into the nitty gritties and the details, I would like to spend some time Understanding how does yoga work? This is something which is very essential. Modern science considers the body. Now, slowly they are starting to consider the outermost layers of that abstract substance called mind. But still, they have not been able to connect to a subtler existence, the spirit consciousness. Yoga and many Indian systems of philosophy are on this very point. According to yoga, according to Sankhya, according to Vedanta, this subtle 
principle called consciousness is the very essence of life. Take that out of the picture and everything will collapse. The ignition in the car is very essential. Without the ignition, none of the modern gadgets, the latest features of the car will function. We need to give the ignition. And once the ignition is given, then the ignition key does not have any role to play. It just sits back and observes. In the same way, the car in itself can function and do many things. But until and unless there is an absence of an expert driver of this car, this car can't go ahead. You have the car, you have the driver, yet the car does not move. Why? Because the passenger, the owner of the car has not stepped in, has not given an instruction. The moment the instruction comes, take the car there, pick something up and bring it back. Or if the passenger, the owner sits in the car and gives the direction, I need to go here. The driver immediately springs to action, starts the car and the whole jaggernut starts moving. In the same way, we have got three dimensions. The body, the vehicle, the chariot, the mind, the driver, the charioter and spirit, the master, the owner, the passenger. And if we want good health, then it is essential that we need to work on these three dimensions. Yoga begins with this premise. Yoga speaks of various tools, how we can achieve this connection and broadening this connection. And in the previous sessions, we have understood that there is a very subtle but powerful force within us. And this higher energy has the ability to change the entire circuit and functioning of the human body. From an ordinary person, we can become superhuman genius. It is this creative force, it is this powerful energy, which is also sometimes known and called and termed as Kundalini Shakti. It is this energy which has the ability to change everything in life. When we speak of everything, then health automatically comes in the picture. Yoga is a way of Managing, harnessing, modulating, regulating and directing this energy. <clears throat> it has got various tools. Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Arana, Mudras, Pandhas, Purificatory Practices, Vyas. So many aspects, practices. But what do these practices do? They basically... Manage this energy, activate it, allow the flow of this energy, ensure that there are no blockages so that this energy can show its wonders. When we are speaking of health, either physical, mental or emotional, then we must remember that this is the point which we need to keep in mind. Yoga is therefore known as a holistic science. It considers ourselves as a whole across the different dimensions of existence. Diseases can hit us at five dimensions because we have got five dimensions of existence. The Annamaya Kosh, the Pranamaya Kosh, the Manomaya Kosh, 
the Vidyanamaya Kosh and the Anandamaya Kosh. These are the five dimensions of existence. And every dimension of existence ultimately reflects into the final manifest dimension called the Annamai Kosh or the body. And so therefore, no matter where the illness originates, it finally trickles down and is seen in the body. If we can catch it at a higher level, the manifestation is not necessary. If we can manage the energetics, we can manage to catch it early then and nip the bud. That is what yoga has the ability to do. Does it mean that a moment the disease has manifested, nothing can be done? No. The disease manifests because there is an imbalance, either an excess or a deficiency. And yoga is the way of re-establishing balance. And as we activate the various which lie latent within us, amazing abilities start coming forth. Many years ago, when Swami Satyananda had come to Rikhya, his Tapo Bhumi, and over there he had established a clinic for the poor people. And there was a doctor who was attending to the patients. Now, one day, a patient came and she had some tumor in her abdomen. The doctor examined and in his professional manner, the doctor told that, look, my dear, you are having the cancer and uh, this is not an easy thing to treat. And uh, unfortunately, we are a very small clinic, only an outpatient clinic. We don't have all those equipments. Why don't you go to a better hospital where better treatment is available because you are going to need more complicated forms of therapy. Even before the patient had gone 100 meters away, a message came from Swami Satyananda who was in sadhana. He was in Ekant. The message came, how can you turn a patient away? Call the patient back, give the patient three aspirins, one to be taken daily and then ask the patient to come back after three days. The doctor said, yes, we will do that. The patient was called, was explained that, look, there is this beautiful medicine which has come. Please take it one tablet three times a day and then you come after three days. Three days later, the patient came and patient was very joyful because there was no sign of any tumor anywhere. The doctor was stunned. All the medical expertise which the doctor had achieved over years, nowhere was it mentioned that aspirin can cure cancer. So, the doctor was stunned. What had happened? Ordinary folk will say, Jadu ho gaya. There was a miracle which took place. But students of yoga would realize that Swami Satyananda, a very adept master in all forms of yoga had exerted his yogic abilities and extended them into this patient and activated specific circuits which dissolved that tumor. It was not the aspirin. All of us know that aspirin does not cure cancer. But aspirin was the medium for that energy to be transmitted.
the beauty is the various practices of yoga allow us to activate this energy on our own it is not necessary that every time somebody else has to do a remote activation no we can do it ourselves too that is what yoga is about how can we bring the symphony back there are changes in the brain there are changes in our metabolic system there are changes in our hormonal system there are changes in the neurotransmitters there are changes in each and functioning of each and every cell of the body and when that starts happening the illness automatically changes it has to be done in a very specific systematic and scientific manner not in a half hazard manner please remember that when we speak of therapy we need to approach with caution in one of the books of medicine there is a dictum which is given which all doctors hold very dear in fact not only doctors but all healers hold very dear and that is first do no harm you might have certain tools but please ensure that the tool does not leave the patient in a more harmful state than the patient was before it is an inevitable fact that every person who is born has to die death cannot be negated but we can always undertake various ways and means to ensure that the quality of life increases and when there is harmony when the systems are in tune with each other then the ability increases and we do not have to depart before our time this needs careful thinking systematic approach and appropriate guidance and implementation and in the next three sessions we will be speaking about this what works for cancer works for most of the diseases because as i have mentioned that yoga is a holistic science if i have got acidity i take one tablet if i have got knee pain i take another tablet if i have got diabetes i take a third tablet so should i consider that if i have got migraine i do one asana if i have got knee pain i do another asana if i have got third problem i do a third asana no 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 why specific asanas will have greater impact at different places the main idea is not fragmented approach but we are a whole which combines of many small units which are interrelated and when we activate this basic energy within us that basic energy works through the pathways the systems the neuroendocrine regulatory mechanisms to ensure that the body health comes up we approach it from that level nevertheless we need to remain very very conscious about the abilities about our limitations people say that oh yoga can cure anything yes yoga can cure anything as we have seen in that example of that lady with cancer but the point is are we able to handle that type of energy just imagine if that energy which swami satyananda had generated if he had let it remain in the patient's system for more than what was just necessary for that intervention it would have created a havoc in the system because that system was not uh 
capable of handling this high energy. If we try to run a 20,000 volt electric current through a wire which can hold only 220 volts, there is going to be a meltdown. Please remember this. Yoga is very powerful and it can do a lot. But before trying to speak about that, we must remember what is the condition of our vessel, our wires. If they are not graded appropriately, they will not handle that energy. It will create a lot of difficulties. So therefore, we need to go very systematically upskilling, upgrading, improving our abilities. And then the energy comes up and everything starts changing. This is something which is very essential. No matter which ailment, which illness. Finally, we boil down to activating this energy which has an ability to heal oneself, improve our immunity, remove the toxins. All those things will happen on its own. But we need to activate this energy and for that, we need different tools. Asan, Pranayam, Yaha, Dharana, Yam, Niyam, Shuddhi Kriyas, Kriyas, or Kriya Yoga. They are all different tools. Practices of Karma Yoga, Bhakti, Niyam Yoga. They are also tools by which we can connect with this energy which is latent in each and every one of us and step by step increase our ability. This is something which we need to keep in mind as we approach this conclave from the perspective of therapy. This conclave will deal with physical ailments predominantly. Not to say that these elements do not have a psychosomatic component. They do. They do. But this conclave focuses more on the somatic manifestations and the ability to change that. And then other upcoming conclaves will speak about mental illness, emotional problems, where those aspects are more. We will also look at different applications in future about education and learning. But this conclave focuses on these illnesses. How does modern science approach and how does yoga approach? This is what we need to learn. This is what we need to appreciate, understand and apply. Because ultimately, this unique approach is what Swami Satyananda initiated and is known all throughout the world for this approach. A scientific approach, a systematic approach, a steady, progressive approach. And when we include this approach in our lives, then the magic of yoga starts unfurling automatically. We do not have to do shirshasan or some very intricate asans. That's not the only way. That can be one way, but there are many other ways. And in the same way, as a doctor looks at the patient, takes the pulse and then says, you need medicine 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the repertory, the doctor has got many medicines. For this specific illness, the doctor might have many other medicines too. But for this patient, because of the patient's unique situation, the doctor will prescribe specific practices. Some will be common to others. Some will be specific to the patient. In the same manner, when we undertake yogic practices, we undertake different practices 
Some of them are common. Some are specific. Both are essential. This conclave will focus on the approach to be taken. It pro also focuses on what are the simple takeaways by which we can either prevent or correct or manage the illness. So, this is what we plan to do over the weekend, in the evening, tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening. That is what the idea is. To try and find the magic of yoga. Aryom Ratsat Namunarayan Jai Ho. Thank you so much for the enlightenment. It, uh, one thing that uh, that kept on ringing in my mind while, while you were talking is about Sugandhim Stivarthanam. Every day you make us chant about it and you know keeping the vehicle decorated and healthy and in in intact every time. That's that's I guess is about the conclave uh, tomorrow and today. Uh, Swamiji, I request you to introduce the speakers for the uh, sessions. Ones that are going to uh, enlighten us with other uh, their knowledge. So the basic structure is going to be that we will have one speaker who will speak about the specific illness, followed by another speaker who will speak about the yogic approach and then will be an interaction session, a panel discussion where specific questions will be taken and discussed right there. Today evening, we have the session on cancer and the session on cancer will be led by Dr. Mayura Deshpande and she at the moment resides in UK where she is actively involved in research in oncology. She started her medical journey with cardiology and then moved towards oncology. And as the research progressed, she realized that there is so much more than just the physical aspect which modern medicine undertakes. And that is how her journey, her quest towards discovering better effective means of healing patients started. Because the defeat or the lowest point or the worst moment for every doctor, every healer is to face the death of his or her patient. And unfortunately, with cancer, it happens all too often. And when this happens, then it triggers a lot of anguish within oneself. Where did I fall short? What did I not do? Is there something I can do better? These are the questions which triggered Dr. Deshpande to research into cancer and try and find out what are the ways by which we can heal people, get them better. So, she will be speaking about cancer. I will be speaking about the yogic approach. Tomorrow morning, we will have the topic of women's health. Why women's health? Simple, because if there is no women, there is no creation. It's only due to the mother that the child is born. And if the mother is healthy, the child will be healthy. 
If the mother is unhealthy, child will be unhealthy. And the system of such a person is extremely delicate, extremely complicated, much more delicate and complicated than a Swiss watch. Just one small gear goes out of sync and everything can collapse. How can we approach that? This requires hormonal areas. This requires physical areas. This requires emotional dimensions and mental dimensions. All of these need to be covered. That is why we have chosen women's health. And to speak about this, we have Dr. Ulka Natu, a gynecologist by training. And she has more than 20 years of experience with yoga. She very beautifully combines both the yogic approach and the medical approach. And she has, in fact, she is a celebrity. She has been regularly giving lectures internationally, nationally, on television, all areas, but extremely humble. A true yoga sadhak. So we are very fortunate to have Dr. Ulka Natu with us to speak on gynecological and women's health problems. She will also present a yogic perspective to the gynecological problems. And then in the evening, in the concluding session on lifestyle disorders, I will be taking that session trying to look at the different aspects of the lifestyles, the illness and what is it that goes wrong due to which we have buy one, get four free. You buy an inappropriate lifestyle and you get diabetes, obesity, hypertension and heart problems free. You don't have to do anything to get that. So, how can we work on them? What is it that we can change? Obviously, we cannot go back to the system which our ancestors were living 500 years ago. Yes, that system of living was much more healthy. But it's impractical to think that we have to live that way. We might be able to live that way for a week or 10 days. But after that, we need to come back to this lifestyle. How then can we manage in this period? That is what we will be seeing in the concluding session tomorrow evening. And I hope, at least for me, the more the questions, the better is the joy in answering. Otherwise, the joy is limited. So I request all of you, I just don't hope, but I request, actively request all of you to come up with questions, to bombard us with questions so that we can discuss them in greater detail. Yes, Swamiji. Uh, so there is a twofold request from my side also. One is to all the participants to be uh, attentive and ask questions and get more for everybody because each of us may think that that is a personal question for us but that may really help everybody in understanding what they really did not realize till then so uh, such things are also you know in a way uh, very ben benevolent acts like you know asking your question in public will take a lot of strength and that will help everybody. And the other part of request Swamiji is to you uh, about, you know, in the in the earlier conclaves, we saw that uh, there were a lot many things that were discussed and uh, over the time, they diffused from our minds. So how to put them in practice? How can we, uh, you know, after the conclave also continue doing them? Or do you have anything planned for us? That yes, day? yes. Uh, you have brought out a very important question and a problem. Uh, many people have spoken to me also about this. 
because in the conclave we discuss about a point we bring about a way we can make a change but then what then we need to practice because as i said yoga is a practical science and if we don't practice we don't get any but how do we practice for that uh, i have decided that as a follow up to the conclave i will be holding a specific workshop three workshops in the month so we have the fourth weekend of the month where the conclave is held the next three saturday sundays weekends we will pick up one of the topics for example this time we are working with cancer we are cons uh, working with women's health and we are working with lifestyle disorders so we will have one workshop on saturday and sunday discussing about these lifestyle disorders and the practices to be undertaken next sunday on cancer third sunday on women's health that way we can go deeper into each of the uh, subjects and offer a chance to practitioners to deepen their connect with this system of healing of wellness and of increased happiness so that is how i have planned to help out that's beautiful swami ji it will be helpful to many of us uh, it is like we are doing this satyam shatabdi yog yag and we are taking all this prasad from you uh, swami ji thank you so much for offering us this uh, conclave as a prasad to know things is different to have i am not offering have... anything i am not offering hmm. anything it is swami ji who has brought it out i am just you know the uh, postman who is just delivering it to all of you that's all the greatness is that swami ji are not holding it to yourself but you are giving it away to all of us so i request the participants also to uh, follow that uh, uh, that path and you know uh, spread the message among your family and friends and bring as many as possible to the conclave uh, so that this effort will be the the effect of this effort will be magnified as much as possible mm -hmm. that's that's a i think there were a couple of questions in the chat box uh so there is a question about women's health should i ask in that session uh, so what would you say swami uh, i think if you uh, those of you who have questions uh, it is very nice uh, we have an uh, email support at satyamsumiran.org you can send your questions in advance on that you can also send it to me on whatsapp or you can send it to chitra or vandana is vandana with us yes swami ji she is here she is here ha huh? okay so uh, yes, thank you. so uh, uh, chitra if you can just uh, put the or vandana if you can put uh, the phone numbers where you can send the message on whatsapp and you, or you can send it to me on my whatsapp or on support at satyamsumiran.com.org uh, that way or directly on the session also they can ask yes no no i am saying that when this is in advance then it gives the speaker also an understanding that okay these are the questions which are coming up so we can in the talk itself address those points so that uh, we can uh, help more people Vandana, can you put up your your phone number also, please? In the chat. Yeah, sure. And now also, if you have any questions on yoga, on health, we can take uh, general questions specific to the illness. We will deal with at that time. But if you have any general question about yoga and health, I think do we have some time? We don't have much time. I think it is appropriate if they ask in the 
particular session. Fine. Okay. But if if you have any, uh, you can always send the messages uh, emails. And uh, if we are not able to, uh, because of time constraints, answer during the sessions, uh, we can always uh, get back to you on your email or on your WhatsApp so that your questions will be answered. So I think we have completed uh, our session and our time is also over, right? It's past 8.30. Is there anything else you would like to mention, Chitra? Yeah, actually, as always, uh, we have had this habit of taking a screenshot. So I request everybody who put their videos on and their real names if possible, so that we will have a screenshot and keep it as our memoir for our uh, Satyam Yoga Conclave. Season four. There are some names where uh, Galaxy and Zoom users are there. So if they can change their display name, uh, it will help us to identify. Otherwise, at least a video on would help. Just keep it on for two seconds. I'll take a screenshot. everyone thank you thank you and namunara and thank you for joining us and uh, stay tuned and we will have the announcements for the workshops in those particular sessions also about cancer workshop in the cancer session and women's workshop in the women's session and so on uh, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, every session, though we it, it looks like it is not directly relevant to us, it will help us in understanding the concepts of yoga and also helping somebody with some advice if we have attended that and heard something about it. So I uh, request you to uh, attend all the sessions of Conclave. They are very uh, carefully designed and put forward for all of us for, by Swamiji. So let us make the most of it. This is a very unique opportunity and I hope we will all get benefited. Thank you, Swamiji, for the session and request you to uh, conclude the session with Sante. Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Jnana or Chin Mudra, head, neck, shoulders, back, straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, Shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Become aware of your breath. Normal spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. And I am aware I know I am breathing in. I am aware I know I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for a few moments. Now shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Bru Madhya. And at the Bru Madhya, visualize the form of either your Guru or your Ishta Devata or a psychic symbol, or a brightly burning candle flame. Maintaining this connection with the icon you have chosen, we shall chant the mantra Om three times, followed by Shanti Part. Take a deep breath in. Oh. 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 
हसतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मा मृत गमय शांतिर्भवतुर्भवतुर्वण मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमिव बंधना मृत्योर्मुषीयृता बंधुश्च सखा हरिओंसर Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. Then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Arium, Sat, Namo Narayan.